Hi, this is Greg Abston from the Laser Training Institute of Professional Medical Education Association. Welcome to our short video series on medical laser training. Hi, this is Greg Abston. We're going to do a demonstration using the um, freehand uh, focusing handpiece on a CO2 laser to show you how to set power density, accommodate it, whether you're using high power or low power. We're going to vaporize an apple here and a piece of uh, grocery store chicken as we go along. Now later we'll also do the same thing with a microscope attachment and show you how to set power density properly on that. Um, I'm going to go in close so I can show you the settings and show you the effect that we're looking for both on the uh, apple and on the chicken. The basic idea is that if we start in focus with a handpiece and then back it out we'll get a larger and larger spot changing our power density. Now first I'm going to wet this tongue blade in water um, and then I'm going to go in close in focus and then back it out gradually if I can get it on the video here. Here we have a small spot, it gets larger and larger and larger and larger. Um, so you change your power density by the distance from the handpiece uh, to the target. Now watch what happens if I do that on the dry side of this tongue blade when that occurs. That's why we wet it, because of the flames. The idea here is that we need to balance between the very small spot of the focused point versus the very large spot of the defocused spot size in order to get a smooth uh, scoop-like shape for vaporization, which is going to change depending upon the power that we have set. Here we can see in a piece of plexiglass impacts that have been made with a CO2 laser and they're illuminated with a red uh, helium neon guide light. Going from the left you see the smallest spot at a set power and time of a pulse that gives you the highest power density and will be used for incisions. Then sliding over to the right you can see that the uh, beam shape gradually shallows out uh, until it becomes very shallow. What we're really looking for is a scoop-like shape, which is marked here in this slide by the vaporize. Um, so whatever power you set, you would want to get a beam shape that looks like that. The larger the power, the larger that spot size would be. But even at a 80 or 100 watts, it wouldn't be more than two or three millimeters in diameter. If you were only using 20 watts, that would be a very small spot of less than one millimeter to do that it's important to select the right beam shape for what you're doing. I now have the laser set at 40 watts of power on a single pulse at a tenth of a second just to show you how this is work on, going to work on the apple. If I'm going to vaporize tissue and I've got enough room to work of at least let's say two or even three millimeters then as a rule of thumb you can max out the carbon dioxide laser whether it's 80 watts or 100 watts. Right now it's set on 40. Now what you wouldn't do is go in close like I am now and focus and hit it but there's one pulse I'm backing it out each time as I come around and you can kind of see the effect in the apple itself. I'll get a close-up in a minute. Here you can see the different effects. At the bottom right you start off with the very smallest spot which will penetrate the most deeply and then it progressively gets more and more shallow until finally it gets so superficial with burning and charring that you would not want to use it. have the beam set at the 40 watts of power but this time it's in the continuous foot pedal mode so that the entire time my foot is depressed the beam's going to come out and let me show you how I'm going to find just the right power density for the power that I set. Uh, all I'm going to do is back it out until I get that uh, smooth vaporization uh, the round part in the crater. Let's start out a little farther away better than that than too close. So I start the um, process here and I've just about got it. There I go. So right now I'm vaporizing 
I'm vaporizing the skin off of the apple without leaving trenches, but at the same time, I'm not making a black. If I would go in too deep, um, you can't see it very well on this apple, but this makes ridges and furrows when you do this. Um, in tissue, that would result in, in bleeding and perforations. If you're too far back, which is what you really want to avoid here. Um, now, you see that orange glow in the middle? That's not the laser, that's carbon being heated to over 1200 degrees uh, centigrade. That is a bad thing to do. The power density is too low. So it's not uh, the power you set, it's the combination of your spot power and your spot size together. Now let's do the same thing with a piece of chicken so you, you can see what this really looks like better in flesh. I'm going to start out too far away out here to begin with. All right, I, it doesn't char as badly as the apple, but it chars too much. I want to go in closer. Right about there. So I have a nice white color on the tissue. I keep moving the beam around so I'm not staying in one place. And you can take this down with a great degree of control and precision. Now, if you want more control than that, you can go back to pulsing. That gives you eye-hand coordination. So let me put it on a single pulse at a tenth of a second. That means I have to pump it with my foot each time I do this. I'm gonna go about the same distance out that I did before, but this time I can peck away at it. Very cleanly. Let me put that in a repeat pulse. I'll just hold my foot down so if you just move the handpiece around, you can just delicately pick away at this. Now, what happens if I want to be even more precise? I've got it at 40 watts of power and a tenth of a second. Let's keep it at 40 watts. Let's not turn the power down because we have a high flux uh, pulse. Let's take the time in half down to 1 20th of a second at the same 40 watts. And now when we uh, go across the uh, tissue, Essentially, it's like we've cut the size of our bite in half when we do this. So it's a very clean way to work, and we're using it at the maximum power of this laser. That's the way that this uh, should be done. And let me do the same thing again here on the apple. I'll move this out of the way. Now, if I can get it lined up on the video here for you. I'm going to do the same thing with that 40 watts and a 20th of a second pulse. That's how you get the precision out of a laser by using the higher power and the shorter pulse widths on it. Okay. To summarize this, when you're trying to set the correct power density by selecting the spot size for the power you've chosen, you really want to look at the beam shape, not just the spot size. Here in this example, you can see the different spot sizes that would be created at 40 watts versus 25 versus 10 watts, all at a tenth of a second which is uh, not absolute, but just represents an average hand speed. So at those settings, um, what you cannot see here in the slide is the shape at the bottom of those craters. You can see the spot size itself. But at the bottom, what is uh, unique to each of those is that it, it is a scoop-like shape at the bottom of the crater. It doesn't have a sharp point at the uh, bottom, and it's not too flat either, kind of like an ice cream scoop cut in half. That means you have the right uh, spot size set for that power on the laser. That's the key. That's what you look for. The idea is that um, if you have even two or three millimeters of space to work, it's best to set the laser at the highest power and then adjust the spot size so you get that correct beam shape and power density. If all you want to do is make an incision, well then of course you choose the smallest spot size and then you turn the power down to accommodate uh, your hand speed as you do that. 
Um, please don't forget to look at the short video on setting power density with a micro manipulator on a microscope as well because that's even more precise than doing it by hand.